Over 2,000 years ago, ancient Chinese scholars observed the changing patterns in our natural world, the climate, the turning of the seasons, and astronomy. The scholars measured and divided the sun's annual movements into 24 equal parts, creating the 24 solar terms, which were used to govern agriculture in ancient China. Even to this day, this invention still guides the lives and traditions of hundreds of millions of Chinese people. June 21st, the summer solstice arrives. This is the time when farmers are busy weeding their fields. Eating pickles and bowls of noodles for health and longevity, this is their staple diet while working during the hot summer months. The summer solstice was one of the first solar terms to be identified. As far back as the 7th century BC, the Chinese measured shadows to calculate the length of the days and the nights. The longest day was set as the summer solstice, the shortest day the winter solstice. The 24 solar terms branched out from these two known points. The summer solstice is the longest day in the northern hemisphere, and the higher the latitude, the longer the period of sunshine. We headed to the most northern city in China. It will be much cooler than Beijing, and we get to experience China's white nights. Well, this is it. China's most northern point, right on the border of Russia. This place is called Morha, and we're here to experience the next solar term, which is the summer solstice, which is called Xiaozhi. This is our guide, Mr. Yang, and the driver is his son, Yang Jun. Moorhe, on the 53rd degree north latitude, used to be a simple county town. It was only made a city in June 2018. Not only does that make it China's most northern city, but also its youngest. The commercial zone might not have the bustle of a big city, but it's certainly unique. This is Hotel. This is Hotel. 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 是的 but besides these local specialities, there's something far more interesting to me. The buildings here, they're very strange. Not traditionally Chinese at all, because we're very close to the Russian border. Morhe is the northernmost city in China but it is not our final stop on this journey. We're going even deeper into the borderlands to find the very tip of China, a little village called Beihong, far north of here. If you draw a straight line from Morhe to Beihong village, it is over 130 kilometers. And it's beautiful up here in the northern latitudes, 
vast and empty. Birch logs stacked up. This kind of tree likes sunshine and grows fast, but yet is extremely cold tolerant. The summer solstice is the best time to appreciate this far off forest land. Shadji 就是通过夏至,你们这还能挣到大钱。那是的,就夏至节给我们带来了经济了,车也比较多,人也比较多,可是往后一天比一天就好了。Mr. Yang and other guides do well out of summer solstice season. With the groups of visitors comes the added risk of forest fire. All these long light nights mean plenty of sunshine. The dry summer solstice means people here are under the constant threat of fires. 现在特别是夏季,夏至节这溜儿,人来的游客也多,防火更加紧,这家今天还旱,不能旱。The forest we pass along the way is probably China's most fire-prone area, which means there are fire stations every few hundred meters. Lighters and matches are completely forbidden. Mr. Yang has had to quit his long-term smoking habit. You just one person here working. Yes, no one else is paying you. No one. Ah, there are visitors. How long time do you have? I go back once a week. Are you not jealous of one person? It's okay. 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 就在这个林区里巡视四公里四公里嗯四公里就来来来来回走来回走来回那个看看没有火星啥的那个那个下雨天有没有那个雷击火你这什么东西这是野玫瑰哦野的玫瑰花野玫瑰嗯干嘛用
，叫嫂子。哎，你好，你好，你好，你好，你好，你好，老板娘。哎 ，Hello， 这请这边看一下。For the time we'll be spending in Beihong for the summer solstice, Mr. Zhang and his wife will be taking care of our board and keep. They are locals and used to depend on farming, but now their lives have changed because of the budding tourism industry. It's made a huge difference. The road used to be really bad here, and they only had three hours of electricity per day. Now there's construction going on everywhere. With a smooth new road and internet access, the summer solstice tourism has opened the doors of the world to the people here. Bang on time! On June 21st, the summer solstice has arrived. At this point, the Beihong village is the best place to experience the longest day in China. The reason why I got up in the middle of the night is to experience the white night. The other is to take part in this fishing. This river, running from the edge of the village, is the habitat of the rare cold water river fish. Mr. Jiang's younger brother has always relied on fishing for a living. He sold what he caught to anyone who would buy it, but it wasn't particularly profitable. Now much of what he fishes goes to his brother's hotel. The rest will be sold to the surrounding vendors. When summer solstice comes, the swelling number of hotel guests demand more and more fish. So every day, from early morning to dusk, he'll be fishing here at least three times a day. The water here isn't deep. Mr. Zhang tells me that when it's the dry season, you can simply just walk over to Russia. But the border guards are watching like hawks. When the winter comes and the ice forms, they erect a large steel fence. You see that just like this kind of weather, this kind of season, you can catch how many fish you can catch? Two hundred and fifty. 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 三三四个呢，三四个，三四个，对，那时候不骑两个。那一个网有多长呢？这个长了，这个得有六七十米呢。那么长？嗯。然后六七十米，三个网，一共能打个二十斤。对。Cold water fish cannot survive in water above 20 degrees Celsius. This makes the relatively cold Heilong River one of the main places for cold water fish in China. Due to the lower water temperatures, the fish grow very slowly. The meat is firmer and more tender, 
and it is highly nutritious. Cold water fish are delicate and die as soon as they leave the water. So they have to be processed as soon as possible after being caught to remain fresh. We're going to follow Mr. Zhang back to his house to prepare the fish that we've caught. It's before 6 a.m. Usually, by this time, I've only just woken up and just about had my breakfast. Today, I've already caught fish and prepared them. It's an utterly different way of life. <laughs> fishing, preparing the fish and drying it. This is the ancestral craft of the locals here and gives tourists like me a tasty glimpse into village life. As the weather clears up, night and day become more distinct temperature-wise. Firewood used to light the stove in the kitchen in daytime warms up the cold bed at night. The Kung is a unique energy system used in the northeast of China. Fish caught in the morning and cleaned by noon are served to visitors when they arrive later in the day. The lightest of cooking methods make the most of the delicate river fish flavor. The summer solstice, Beihong village has China's longest days and longest day of the year, which means sunset to sunrise is only about three hours. Sunlight remains in the atmosphere though, and on the ground. So, for the few days before and after, it's light around the clock. At this time of year, people call Beihong village the village that never sleeps. Just as the summer solstice has transformed the Beihong village, the 24 solar terms have not just guided Chinese cultivation since ancient times, but have also changed the lives of people in our age. From this day onwards, sunlight hours will start to decrease. But as the earth heats up, the hottest days of summer are upon us. <laughs> 